Stellar Blade is finally here, and this game is a lot harder than we all thought it would be. It might look like a casual hack and slash, but there's absolutely a learning curve to the combat, and the timings for parries and dodging take some getting used to. Lucky for us, we get a number of abilities in our skill trees that give us a huge buff early on, and makes the combat a lot easier if we unlock them. So in this video, we're going over the best skills to unlock early on in Stellar Blade. If you're loving this game just as much as me, consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a comment. I'll have new Stellar Blade videos every week, so I'd love to see you back here for those. But let's get right into this list. So I ended up grinding the Stellar Blade demo for over 40 hours, trying to unlock all the skills I could before release day. I got close, but ended up beating Abaddon before I unlocked everything, and in the interest of keeping that save file, I had to stop short of all the skills, but I still got all the ones that I'm going to mention in this video. So just a heads up, if you're watching this after release, all the footage in this video was captured in the demo. So let's begin with the skills, and we'll start with the one that I think you should always unlock first, Focus Boost. Focus Boost is probably the number one most important skill you're going to want to unlock when you start a new save because it increases the timing window for perfect parries, and it makes parrying attacks so much easier. Because parrying is tied to both your beta energy and the enemy's balance meter, you want to be able to consistently parry oncoming attacks, and unlocking focus boost will open that window up. You'll instantly notice the difference when you unlock it. It really is night and day. And you'll be wondering how you were parrying anything before having this unlocked. This one is found in the survival skill tree, and it costs you two skill points, so you'll have to grind up a little against the low level baddies, but once you get those two points, the grind will have been well worth it. There's a few skills that cost just one skill point, and I know the temptation will be strong to unlock something like Lightning Rush or Repulse because it only costs the one point, but the easier you can make the fights early on, the easier it's going to be to farm those points in general. So fight the temptation, get your hands on that focus boost because it really makes a world of difference, and pretty soon you'll be chaining those parries back to back to back. Likewise, reflex boost is the next skill that you want to unlock, and this does for your dodge what focus boost does for your parries. The perfect dodge is sometimes more reliable for avoiding damage than the parry, because that dodging animation takes longer, and you're completely invincible throughout the flip. Reflex Boost opens that timing window for the perfect dodge, and makes it easier to get out of the way of attacks. A word to the wise, and this was something that was not part of the demo. The perfect dodge is one of the ways you build up your burst meter, which lets you unleash huge power moves. At a certain point in the game, you get the ability to use these burst skills, and these work similarly to the beta skills, except where perfect parries charge beta energy, a perfect dodge will charge your burst energy. The dodge and the parry are kind of like two sides of the same coin, serving the same purpose for two different skills. So even though we don't start the game with any burst energy, if you can unlock reflex boost and get good with the dodging, then by the time we unlock burst, you'll be more than ready for it. This is another skill that costs two points in the survival tree, so save up a few and you'll be thanking yourself later. Segwaying off that, the double dodge is becoming my favorite little tech skill. There's some fancy tricks involved with it, and it goes hand in hand with reflex boost, so this will be the next one I recommend you unlock. It's great for opening up more space between yourself and your target, and there's even an animation trick where you actually recover faster from the double dodge than from doing just one. The best way I tested this was with the drone blaster during the stalker boss fight. After just one dodge, it takes a lot longer for Eve to recover and go into the third person shooter animation, but if you double dodge, you can get into that third person shooter mode pretty much instantly, and you've got that added bonus of having moved further away. The shooter mode is just one thing that benefits from the double, but it's an excellent all around skill. You can even freely control the directions you dodge in, going side to side or side to back, front to back, whatever you need to do. And I personally love the aesthetic of Eve's hair bouncing and following her movement. It's a really nice touch. This one also takes another two skill points in the survival tree, so far, we've spent six points in total, so it's a fair bit of grinding early on, but trust me, it's worth it, and the sooner you get comfortable with these survival-based skills, the better you'll be with the offensive ones. In the beginning of the game, we start with two out of the four beta skills, the triplet and the slash, and they're good starting points. Triplet does rapid damage to a single target, while the slash is an area of effect that takes out crowds. The remaining two skills are Shockwave and Shield Breaker, 
And these are the next skills you absolutely want to unlock. They just complete your kit, and the earlier you get them and start leveling them up, the better off you'll be. Shockwave is actually the first ranged attack in the game. It releases a double blast of energy that will hit a target that's far away, and the range is actually pretty impressive. As you level it up, it gets even better, like getting an extra third hit and eventually being able to knock over huge targets. This is probably my favorite beta skill as of recording this because having a ranged attack so early on is a literal game changer. When you knock an enemy off balance with repeated parries, or if you pull off a repulse on them, they get knocked back and reveal a weak point. It's this little yellow blob thing, and if you hit that with a ranged attack, it does a lot more damage. Your gut instinct might be to shoot that blob, and you'd be spot on, but when it's early in the game and we don't have the shooter mode yet, our only ranged option is going to be Shockwave, so it's nice that we can still capitalize, even without all of our tools yet. Plus, this one just looks fancy as hell. Shield Breaker, I could argue, is even more important than Shockwave, because every enemy in the game has a shield meter that gives them damage reduction until you take that shield out. As the name implies, that's exactly what this beta skill is for. This is probably your single most reliable way of dropping an enemy shield, and it only gets better as you level it up. And I should mention that by level up, I just mean these add-ons that you unlock with additional skill points. Both Shield Breaker and Shockwave only cost one point each to unlock, so they're very affordable to start. But every add-on after that will cost an additional skill point, so by the time you get to the last upgrade, you're going to be spending five skill points on just that one. This is true for all four beta skills, so maxing these out will not be a small task, but if you like the grind, then it's something good to work toward. I actually mentioned this skill earlier on in the video, and I think it's the next one you should consider unlocking. The Lightning Rush and Infinite Rush are great for both offense and mobility. When we start the game, we get a rush attack that lets us close in on faraway targets and start our combo. The Lightning and Infinite Rush are just upgrades to the distance you can travel with it, and it ups the damage. This one is kind of like the focus and reflex boosts, because in the same way those will make you wonder how you were parrying and dodging without them, this one will make you wonder how you were rushing without these. The distance upgrade is really noticeable, and you'll be closing in on enemies before they even get a chance to see you. I wish I could say this is a movement hack, but it's really not. The developers clearly didn't want us to abuse the rush for traveling long distances. That cooldown makes it more of a combat move. With that said though, you can still give yourself a nice boost forward, just for poops and giggles. My favorite part of these upgrades though is that they're only a single skill point each, so they're super easy to unlock. The last set of skills I want to recommend in this video will help you charge up your beta gauge so you can unleash those powerful beta attacks whenever you want. In the beginning of the game, the betas are definitely the most reliable forms of damage, so anything that charges your gauge faster is a big plus. The beta energy recharge skills come in a couple of shapes and sizes. There's two sections for them, one each in the attack and survival trees. The attack version will recharge beta energy with every successful attack that lands. So I would recommend actually unlocking this one first because it will turn your basic combos into a reliable charge up method. The one in the survival tree charges energy with every perfect parry. So that one goes hand in hand with focus boost and together they can help charge up your beta attacks. The initial skill only costs one skill point to unlock, just like the betas themselves, but they each have an upgrade that costs an additional two skill points. So if you want the fastest possible recharge early on, you'll have to dish out six more skill points to unlock these boosts. But in my opinion, it's well worth the grind and always having a beta attack ready to go feels really nice. And a major contributor to that will be these beta recharges. As you can see in the demo, there's two more skill trees that we didn't even have access to yet. One of these is obviously going to be for the burst skills I mentioned, and the other could be anything. I actually don't know what that one is as of recording this. All I know is that it's more content for me once I get that far in the game, so expect a part 2 to this video going over the best mid to late game skill unlocks. I'm looking forward to making that one. If this video was at all helpful, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. A lot of these recommendations are just common sense unlocks, like, oh, make your parry better, big surprise but it can still help to have a guiding hand, especially because it's a new game and players are still getting used to it. But that's what I've got for this one. Leave a like if you liked. Consider subscribing for more Stellar Blade videos. We have channel memberships too. If you want to join our ever-growing community, you can hit that join button next to the video title. Shoutouts to current channel members, Duft Curse Hanover, Isaac S, Scoots McGee, 
Viljalmer, Minodam8, and Zeta Ann. Thank you so much for continuing to support my work. Y'all are the real MVPs. That's all for today. This has been Star, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.